drones would be more useful if they were smarter. Most of the drones that are on the market right now rely on a combination of GPS and manual controls. Their usefulness would rise to the next level if they were smart enough to fly autonomously. Defense Research and Development Canada has announced a partnership with the University of Toronto and a company called Drone Delivery Canada. They are developing drones that can see. Joining me now to talk about machine vision drones, Tony DiBenedetto, CEO of Drone Delivery Canada. Uh, hi, hi, Tony. Let's, let's start with the technology to take us through that, and then we'll have a better frame of reference for the rest of the discussion. Uh, how how sure. is this different from the drone that I, I see somebody flying over a, a news event? Well, it, uh, Pat, thanks for having me. It, it, it's very much different. Um, really, it's artificial intelligence. It's the, the partnership that we've established with the University of Toronto and, and the government is really to develop vision-based learning for drones so they can actually see. And it's all about sense and avoidance and really going to the next generation or, or next iteration of commercial drones. Is it processing what it's seeing and, and, and determining the, the, the nature of the obstacle or just knows not to crash into it? No, it, it's, it's seeing, it's learning, uh, it's visual breadcrumbs is the actual term. Um, it's really about commercializing, about moving this technology to the next scale, which is really the holy grail, uh, both vision-based learning and beyond visual line of sight flights. So once you have the technology uh, at the point where, where you can rely on it, what, you know, the company's name is Drone Delivery. What, what will you deliver and where will you deliver it? So we've been at this now for uh, just over three years. Um, we went public last June. And what we're building out is a drone delivery platform for Canada, really to start in Canada's remote communities, Canada's north, our backyard, uh, very vast open spaces. Uh, hundreds of these communities have no infrastructure or very little infrastructure. So we see an immediate application utilizing this technology in these areas to provide just-in-time access of goods and services to these members of these uh, little villages and towns. You know, a lot of companies work in the the other direction on this that they, they tackle the big urban centers because they feel that, that the, the concentration of population gives them more opportunity. Uh, your, your thinking is the opposite, that uh, the opportunity is because these areas are underserved? It's all about taking baby steps. So the technology has to come and it has to start somewhere. We believe that the backyard is the right place. And, and we've been working with all our various stakeholders, including the federal government and the various regulators, really to understand where the right place is for this technology to start. Um, let's start in big open areas, far and away from people, far and away from objects, and let's prove out the technology, and then over time, we bring it closer. So uh, for okay. us, it's, that's the right place. So, so you're talking about proving out the, the technology, but I, I want to move you ahead a couple of years. Uh, the technology is proven out, you've got service up and running. Uh, are there opportunities globally? And, and specifically what I wanted to get into was uh, the U.S. has been pretty tough on, on commercial use of drones. Uh, would, would you find that there's opportunity here? Or if you were going to go outside Canada, would you go somewhere with a, a more permissive regulatory environment? You, you know, there's a tremendous amount of applications for this technology, the way that we're developing it. Um, the U.S., uh, Canada, I'm actually happy to say that we're, we're, we're a little bit more forward thinking uh, than the U.S. We have a, we're very lucky that we have a very proactive, very pro-technology, innovative federal government, and they really see a tremendous amount of applications for this technology. And we've been contacted by organizations globally, whether we're talking about mail carriers or courier companies or medical supply agencies, etc., globally looking on how to use this technology within their own geographies and landscapes.